watching me like a nigga is cable. I be on no label, but my clothes be all. Shea butter from Ghana, Thailand, Gasana, Bad Poly Designer, Rihanna Madonna, My State from Jigger, Replace a Nigger, Hair Natural as Hell, Get Paid Your Figure, Picnics and Books, Strip Clubs and Bottles, Four Days I Cook, Most Days I Model, Big Legs in Summer, Big Hair the Cold, Chill Humble as Well, Black Smart and Bold, Double Dutch and Cookouts, Edibles and Vibe, Shaped Like a Goddess, For Randall Ride, Move Stay Beyonce, Smile like the sun, probably be your fiance before it's all done. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of a No Label Convo. Got another special guest with us here today, but as always, thank y'all for shouting us out, sharing on Instagram. Yes, yes. All the feeds, reposting. Yep. Um, subscribe on YouTube for us, definitely. Those podcast platforms, hit those. We on those. But definitely shouts out to y'all because y'all helping us keep going each and every day. Yeah, we've been watching it grow up through these past couple of days, man. We definitely appreciate it. Just keep sharing, keep liking. And uh, we want to shout out to our sponsors. Shout out to Guapcoin. Guapcoin. Cryptocurrency for the culture. You yes, know what sir. I mean? Monetizing black influence in this digital age. Let's get it. So that joint went up last week. Ugh, I, was, yeah, I was excited, Five? man. Whew. Hell yeah. But we sitting here right now with a with a man I've, I've seen transition from that uh, beginning of the let's say, a hip-hop industry and how it changed to this digital age, and he's adjusting really well. My, my man's right here. He gave me my start in the in the whole industry scene in Buffalo. What's good, Castle? Castle what's good? Beats, what's good, what's good, what's good so bro? Appreciate y'all having me. No doubt. No. Appreciate you for letting us lose, use the space, first of all. This ain't dope. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no yeah, problem. We, we in Studio studio B, you know what I mean? <laughs> studio A up there getting wavy, too. Shit. Right. Man, you, you, you did construction on most of this, too, right? Yeah, I did all the construction right here. Yeah, that shit's this shit is hard, bro. Cause I remember I I actually I started working here as like a as an intern. Like I remember my brother just recorded randomly here. Young boy. Yeah, I was I might have been like 20, 21, 22. Oh, you went now, young. Oh, well, young. Shit, I'm young now. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, but I was just like, yo, I'm trying to I'm trying to work. I'm trying to see what this about. He's like, all right, come on. <laughs> and I was like, that was the first person ever to like. Like, yeah, come on, work, work, like, let's do mm -hmm. music and do that. Like, always appreciate it for that shit. So, yeah, man. No problem. I always try to do that because I know when I was trying to get my start, it was like a, a closed group or a closed net of people. Like, they wouldn't share nothing. It was like people didn't want to give away gems. Mm -hmm. Like, you kind of had to fight and learn everything on your own. So, I was like, once I got in that position, I was like, man, I want to just share whatever knowledge I got to whoever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just keep it going. Definitely appreciate that. Like, shoot, I could, I could, I could say I, that's where I got mine from. Cause like, that's what we do with the podcast. Yeah, that's we, something that he definitely has like, rubbed off on me that he do now for sure. Yeah, just try to like empty my cup. Like, who was it? Uh, with Maro. Like when we first, when we first met, at, when I went to school. Cause like, when I was, I was working here, and then I was like, no, I'm about to go to school for, uh, engineering. But then I just, I happened to switch my majors last minute. Mm -hmm. I met him. I met Maro, and we, I was just like, yeah, I'm, I think I'm done with music. Da, 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 da. We we was talking. We ended up talking for like five hours, just music nonstop. He was like, nigga, you ain't done with music. Get the fuck out of here. But it's just like, but I was like, my intention was just like everything I knew, pour it into him. And then it's just like, but I noticed when I did that, I got more information that just kept coming. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm like, oh, this is it's something here. So and like, I just kept that. I kept that philosophy since since then. And shit, unknowingly shit, I'm learning, learning, <laughs> learning from you. <laughs> like that's, that's well, shoot. So when when did you uh when did you start producing? Uh, so I was 13. Um, I started playing the drums at church. Um, and then the course of me playing the drums at church, my brother uh, SK Home, he wanted to rap, so he was like, he needed a producer because he at that time I think it was like SoundClick and MySpace where you got beats from. Mm -hmm. Um, you really didn't find nothing on YouTube, so he bought me this program called uh, Music Generator on PlayStation. <laughs> it was like, yo, if you could make, if you could play the drums, you can make beats. Like, yo, just play with this, figure it out, and I mean, see what you could do. So, it was pretty much just something simple. I think it was Funk Funk Flex uh, Music Simulator. You just drag loops, 
Mm. It's already drums in there, already sequenced and all that stuff for you. You just place them how you want it. So we would had a we would had a PlayStation hooked up to our TV. Like the PlayStation, the, yeah, first like the, one. the original, the great junk, the, the big Come boy on. PlayStation. We would hook that up to uh, we had that hooked up to the TV. We had like a karaoke machine, so we would turn the TV volume up all the way, uh, all the way loud. Turn the mic up all the way loud, and that's how we recorded. That was my first experience engineering too. That's right. So dope. he would we would play the beats off of the TV. <laughs> And then he would rap into the uh, karaoke machine, and we recorded on a cassette tape. <laughs> That's dope. So how much did y'all? How much music did y'all record like that? Like for how long were you recording like that? Um, and making beats off the PlayStation. I say like two, two, three years, and then that's after that. That's when I got into FL Studio, FL Studio Three. Mm-hmm. It was either two or three. I was using back then. So I've been using yeah, FL for a minute. Yeah, I'm about to say, that's yeah. crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy that, like, you've been on that for, was tuned for a minute. So you said you were playing the drums. Um, did you, you said you went to PA, right? Yeah. So, like, uh, did you audition there for drums? Like, did you get in for it? No, I actually went to perform when I was for art, for, like, painting oh, wow. and drum. Um, They didn't even know I did. I played the drums until maybe my sophomore year in high school. Plus, PA always had drummers, so it wasn't like yeah, that's right. We had we always had mad dope drummers, so I was like, I wasn't even trying to like fit in that little niche or whatever. Yeah. Like my my thing was art. Like if you needed something drawn for what a play, a, um, production, not me or just like at that time, the thing was you was drawing rappers for girls so you can get hugs and stuff. When you was a shorty, <laughs> that was the only way you could get hugs and be cool. Yeah. So that 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 was my back then in high school. That's that was my way to be cool in high school. Yo, my man's Alejandro, when we was in fifth, sixth grade, he used to do uh portraits though. He used to have like T I, he had Mello and like he used to he used to give me he used to give me one. So I used to take the show home, yeah, I do this you had the girls come up to you. Oh my god. <laughs> that, that was it though that's how you got hugs in school I, that's a fact. All, all the shorties wanted Iverson 50 Cent um who else was rapping back then it was, I, I know it was a lot of Rockefeller artists cause Jay Z was like really popping back then mm-hmm. yo that's funny man that just brought back some pictures <laughs> nah but PA PA had so much talent like looking back on it like people like uh, Don't Watch TV Trav we mm-hmm. interviewed him mm-hmm. You see uh, um, Armani a lot of the Mile High boys that we just interviewed. Yeah, yep, Karma. Karma, Karma Luke here. Luke. 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 Uh, Armani Luke. Caesar. Who was what's uh you D White? When did it you remember D White? Who was the first one? He's a pre producer here. I, I think he followed me on Instagram. I never like had a one on one conversation yeah. with him, but I mean, you like pictures back and forth, like yeah, stuff like D-White that. Yeah, D White, nice too. Lamont, who we interviewed. Yep, he went Lamont. to PA. Yeah, man, it just produced a lot of talent, and it's just like, it's dope to see now, like we're buff, like we're older, and we're seeing it, the real manifestation of like our creativity, like really popping off. This shit is dope. So like. When uh, you was making beats early, so when were you able to start getting your own studio space? Um, I say my senior year, I had a uh, my man Clayton, that was also he went to PA with me. He's the one that like kind of convinced me to take it serious. Like mm. you can actually do something with this, and he was producing for other artists or whatever. And he was like, yo, dope as sound. And he kind of like gave me like some tips and tricks or whatever because he was making beats for a little bit longer than me. Um, So we would always go to his house and make beats. Um, And then like later on that year after I graduated, I had my own apartment. So I, I kind of had a workspace there um, where I can go and make beats. And then like kind of moving out, moving around with him, talking to different artists, I kind of like learned how to shot beats and stuff like that through through doing that and then going to like different uh, music conferences like New York okay. City, Atlanta, LA, Word. um, to talk to artists and meet like different A and R's and majors. So is this like what I'm trying to get the what uh time frame this is? Is it like the, is this like slowly introducing of the like LimeWire and the Napsters like around this time, or was it still like mostly hand to hand? I say it was as far as like. Distributing beats or yeah, cause like I like I I'm I'm like getting like, access to music right yeah like, like getting downloading. access cause like now we think of when we think of like you'll hear like beat makers every everything is damn near online like send this beat here send this beat there just via email 
but I'm trying to think like as a producer in in that time and like in that earlier time frame, how was you getting you make it like a beat tape? Or was you like pressing up discs and, and like not necessarily out? tapes but CDs. Mm. I actually was cleaning out upstairs uh here at the studio yesterday and I actually found like four of my old beat CDs. I didn't want to listen to them. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid of how they sounded. I'm sure there's some dope stuff on there, but um, it was probably a lot of more like hand to hand with CDs. Like, you know what I mean? I go to wherever, wherever the location is on my laptop, play a couple of joints, and then once you pick them out, I mean, I'll put them on a CD for you. Back then, CDs, I mean, laptops came with CD drives. I'm mm-hmm. not sure they still do that yeah, now, because yeah, most uh, of them don't. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I I say the biggest thing was was CDs back then when I was originally starting to shop beats. Um, LimeWire, LimeWire was a thing, but it was mostly for like that's how we stole samples back then because we mm. couldn't afford yeah. to like really cop a bunch of vinyls and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. I was real sa- sample heavy when I started making uh, beats, so we got all of our old school songs from uh, from LimeWire and we put them on a CD and sample that way. So just to backtrack a little bit, so you said you went to PA originally for like drawing and painting and art and all that. Were you still doing that heavy when you was getting into like taking a beat making serious? No. Nah, like when you got older when in high school? When I graduated school? from school, I kind of had a sore spot for art. Like I didn't even want to draw or paint again. Mm. Like after I graduated school, I didn't want to have nothing to do with art. Why is that? Um, just because of experiences with teachers and I was just kind of drawn up. Like mm-hmm. we, I think when I was in school, we had art for four hours a day. That's pretty yeah. much like half your day. Like I ain't want to draw nothing. Yeah, I feel yeah. that. And I just didn't see the money side of it too. It was just like I can draw dope or whatever, but I don't see nobody painting me. I mean, paying me for for drawings or paintings or whatever. Uh, yeah, that's because I remember going there and it's like I my dad made me like kind of like force me to go there because they started they was talking about cutting the programs for uh, arts and music in all the other Buffalo public schools, mm-hmm. and it was just like. I got it. I like I went in there for piano, but it was just like they didn't have like a piano program or something like that. And it was like it, that's cause like I always felt like that kind of like pulled me away from the creation of music. Mr. Shinta wasn't there. When he he was, he was there, but he didn't he didn't do private like individual oh, lessons and stuff. Like yeah, that. it was like I think it, I don't think they even started offering that till maybe high school. And I was like, if you lucky type shit, because they like they had music going all day every day, but. Yeah, that's that's interesting. That's interesting because I've seen people for that go to PA who are like amazing drawers and they, they'll switch to music or people who's in music and they'll start drawing. It's it's I don't know. It may, it maybe it nah. School like can do that shit. though, man. Mm-hmm. Cause I hated reading in school. Never never used to want to read book reports. I'd look up summaries online. You know me. I talk to them <laughs> now. <laughs> right now, I'd be reading a different book like every other week. So. Mm-hmm. That sh- I don't know, it might be just that school system, that structure, yeah, depending yeah. on the teachers you get, it's like it turns you off from certain shit. Nice. You like the third person this week that said like they can read books or knock books out. I, I can do an audio book, like mm-hmm. I can listen to it and still move around. As soon as I seen pages, words on the page, it's like nap time for me. Like I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, done. That, that shit to <laughs> I'm out. It depends on the book too though. I was gonna say too, with the uh with just like the transitioning from like like music to art and stuff like that. Like we see that a lot now with like NFTs. You, you familiar with NFTs? It's you like talk about the new uh, media like, stock thing or whatever. Yeah, it is well. it's like uh, it's like crypto for uh, for art. Basically, you can upload images like images, like gifs, music, all that type of stuff. And it's like you can set your own price to it. Like, so you can do one of ones. You can do multiple copies of a certain project, and you can people are selling it like you're selling like a digital version of your album or a picture and it'll record like you can set how much royalties you want from it if it's because it's encrypted when people send it to each other they'll have to like it goes through the whatever the blockchain system you will automatically get your royalties like if they sell it like so it's like it kind of like cut out the label so you ain't got to worry about collecting royalties and like all that the type labels is already cut up if you know how to register all your stuff and handle your business properly, yeah. Didn't you but, say but something along the lines like you own like the stuff in like a virtual world too? Oh yeah, like because they have like, like, kind of like a Sims character type of thing. Yeah, that's like another part of it. Like oh, a lot okay. of them, like they're creating like virtual worlds where you can like go and 
you'll have an art gallery of all of this digital art, the NFTs. So it's like it's the the one joint called uh, Decentraland is the one I I've been following, but they're they're they've been making new joints. Yeah. So you gotta log onto a computer or something and look at your artwork. That's what you pretty pretty much. It's like it's like it's like having a like a game like like a two K avatar like. You know, dudes be walking around their 2K mm-hmm. course and shit. They got their own. Like, like imagine buying like a limited edition Castle Beats, you know what I mean, jersey. And it's like, if you that bo- like if you pop in and go, oh, he got the limited edition. That shit costs 100K. I, bro, let me buy that off you. I get, I send you 150. I mean, I I can understand and I can appreciate a lot of this new technology that I mean, people are coming up with. I'm just not with it. I'm I'm like Will Smith for iRobot, bro. I'm just like <laughs> until until I gotta go there, like as yeah. as the last resort, I'm gonna fight it to the death of me. Cause like I like in, in in your example, you have a digital art gallery in such and such computer or game or world or whatever. I don't got time to be on sitting on no on no computer to walk through a digital world to even get to an art gallery. I I like the feeling of. I mean, I got artwork all around here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I like to be able to physically walk in my own space and touch and not mm-hmm. log into a computer and be like, all right, I got to sit there, wait for this thing to load up, walk through whatever portals or whatever <laughs> you got to I mean, yeah. do to get to it. And then if somebody want to be an asshole and hack this shit or, I mean, delete it or kill a server or something, this shit gone anyway. You you got like I'm not gonna disagree with you. Well, I'm just looking at it like we see how everything gets so digitized and with the pandemic and everything and like you see I see it with kids now. Like kids be one years old know how to work phones. Like that's parenting though. I got four kids. That's parenting. That's a fact. My kid come. I'm my my oldest son couldn't get a cell phone until he was a freshman in high school. Uh, that's that's respectful. I I, yeah, I think I got my first one in eighth grade. Right before, and, and it's and it's that's it's kids getting it when they sh- as soon as they go to school too. And like now, my my youngest daughter, she's one. Like when I see her with like trying to grab our phones to try to grab the tablet, I mean like in some current circumstances, like she'll watch her Sesame Street on it or whatever. But for the most part, ain't no tablet in her hand. Yeah, that's rare. That's 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 the that's the minority these days though. Yeah, I, and when I was telling him when he was explaining the whole thing to me too, I was like, I don't, I can't wrap my head around wanting to own a shirt for a thousand dollars so I can just look cool in this digital world. I like, think that's I the other thing of it yeah, too. Like, I'm I not buying a regular shirt for a thousand dollars. Exactly. They, they got like they got um the digital like NBA is doing this shit with like playing cards and like moments. So it's like you know how like you got you got you bought playing cards as a kid right so you got a whole book full of yep you got a full whole book full of them you don't necessarily know the worth of each card in there what's the name you you may have bought them for the low you might have even bought one from the store for ten thousand for the michael jordan limited edition rookie joint now they just got that as a digital created thing that's that's how i that's how i look at it and it's like oh i got the limited edition michael jordan I don't care. I wasn't born in '86. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sure. But to them, it's like it, that's what, and I, I feel like that's how it's gonna like transition. I think it's gonna come in big with like video games and stuff like that. Like people be the them video game worlds be different, bro. Like cause like us uh, so, like games like League of Legends and stuff like that. They'll like have half a million people watching a live joint. They 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 selling out the Staples Center playing video games on the jumbotron. Right. Yeah, and it's like I never knew that was a thing until like I like I was later in college, and I'm my, like, my son kind of got me into that because he uh, he st- actually started an esports team at his school, yeah, his high school. So I yeah, and it's, I, I see where it's going. Mm-hmm. I'm just not willing to invest in it. <laughs> right, like I throw him some money and let him play with it and see what it do. Yeah, and and that, that's what I like. And a lot of times when I like when I be on the like crypto wave, it's like. I really do it in like instead of for like my kids and my kids because they be straight. So when that when that fully yeah, it's a take long over, run type of thing. yeah, that's how I look at the crypto. That's yeah, that's how I've been treating it. So like, you you coming? What you graduated? You said in like two thousand three. Oh, two thousand three. So like, 
back then, did you see it change? Everything getting this digital? Yeah. Yeah. Cause like I remember like growing up, and I remember I'm like, I, I like I remember like the beginning of the internet, like personal computers and shit like that. But yeah, you have to get off the house phone and use the computer, yeah. <laughs> dial up and all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 trippy to me now because I'm seeing this like. Nah, it used, everything used to be about, nah, you need to go be outside to know what's going on. And it, now it's like, you got to be on a digital device to figure out what's going on. That shit is, is kind of... I, I, I think there's two ways or two sides to that. Like, yes, you want to promote yourself on a digital platform, but you still need to, to... To really get things done, you still need to be outside and moving and meeting and networking with yeah, people. Yeah, person to person interaction, creating those like moments and memories with people, those conversations. Right. Yeah, I, I think they always gonna remember those. Definitely, I, I, I definitely think there's still value in that. The the Instagrams and the Twitters and the YouTube and all the videos, that's just the promotion and the I mean the in your face side of it. There's yeah. still a lot of people that you see behind closed doors that's still in meeting rooms or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, probably in meeting rooms or whatever before the COVID or whatever st- started. That's making things happen that you wouldn't know about. No, that's facts. That's real. That's facts. Because I thought about that when I was in Africa. Like, he was trying to, they was trying to, like, I was in the, uh, on the label side. They was like, oh, we just got to put money behind these Facebook ads and da 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 And we going to do this. And, like, and I'm like, I'm like, bro, like, I've, I've, when, I, when I was there, like, you didn't want to walk. Nobody in the city was walking around with their phone out. And it's just like it's a city of fifteen million people, but it's like it's dangerous, so nobody wants to look distracted. Nobody got headphones in, and I'm like, I'm like, bro, y'all need to just do regular hand to hand, put up a bunch of flyers, street team, pass out joints, and they they was looking at me like I was crazy. <laughs> like he's a dinosaur. Yeah, <laughs> that's I'm, dinosaur shit now. No, nah, that's like, and I'm like, and not nah, still proof in that, especially like. No, nah, I was just saying that's what they saying. Yeah, and no, no, and it's like yeah, I was about to. Uh, transition into that like Griselda kind of showed us that that was they were the last people to really I feel like do that hand to hand and really like get off with the vinyls and all of that like having street teams and, and shit like that like uh, plus you gotta think of is other outside of America or any other technically advanced I mean society there are still other countries that like their music that's mm-hmm. not not me as advanced as they are so you gotta move a certain way there's people out there that still, I mean, still got walking around with boom boxes in the middle of the street, and yeah. people still like that nostalgia type stuff. Yeah, that's a fact. No, I mean, I I got vinyls hanging on the wall over there. No, I mean, I still, mm. I still, I pull out a record like at my house and play old music for my kids. They they call me pops and <laughs> granddad, turn that old stuff off. But I'm like they. To me, they still need to. I grew up like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I want to yeah. get them that experience. I don't care if you don't do it when you get older or get your house or whatever, but you still saw it and you still experienced it. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, they definitely going to appreciate that. They definitely, because I'm trying to think, uh, when I first, like, really, like, heard vinyl, like, on big speakers, it hit completely, completely different. Com- definitely. Completely different. So, like, um, when did, like, who... Who were some? What, when did you meet the people like uh, in the Buffalo scene, who was like making noise? I, I'm pretty sure like you've recorded Benny in them before, right? Or I haven't recorded Benny. Um, I met Benny once, but this was like I think he was still running around calling himself Benny Two Chains or something. So that was like a minute ago. Um, but I've worked with Love. I've worked with Jay Skis recording. Um, worked with Keisha Plum recording. Um. I was supposed to work with uh, Rick Hyde, but that session ended up getting like rescheduled or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like a scheduling conflict, something right. happened. Um, a lot of my other major placements are just like through production, like me getting getting beats to them. Okay, and you because you was in New York City, you was going back and forth to New York City. Yeah, oh, right? I, I always go back and forth to New York City. I still got uh, people that I met there that shot beats for me, okay. or they just not me let me in a session or whatever, and I can get beats off that. One. So how'd you first get those connections out in the city? You were like going out there when you was younger or you got family out there maybe? Uh, just going out there when I was younger, going to different music conferences. Um, the very first music conference that I, I went to, I ended up meeting a guy named Conrad from Bad Boy. Mm-hmm. He had uh, Danny D. Kane, um, I want to say 112 at that time. And like a, a bunch of acts on that Bad Boy. I played him some stuff. 
uh, he liked it. Um, so I had a, like a Kanye Just Blaze type song, which was like that's what was hot at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also met a guy named Eric Beasley. At a, he, I think he was at Asylum. I'm not sure where he's at now. And he he said, said the same thing. Uh, I got that gritty New York, you know what I mean? Song. Um, gave me their contact info. It's like whenever you just want to shop or whatever, or whenever we look for certain type of uh, sounds for certain projects. Um, this is our folder, whatever. Just dump some beats in here, you know what I mean? And we shop them around for you. That's play. That's dope. So, what were some of your influences, like producers that you really listened to growing up, that kind of influenced your sound when you started making beats? Um, Heat Makers, Just Blaze, and Kanye West. Those are my three, like go to. Ryan Leslie later after I started doing like R and B stuff, mm-hmm. but like I say, those is like my main four. Yeah, because yeah, when I hear your beats, like. I remember from from the jump, I'm like, your beats in themselves are like songs. It's, it's <laughs> like them joints can play by themselves, mm-hmm. and it's like it like the beat itself will tell a story. I never heard beats like like that, like that was like that complex. And it was just like we used to uh, shit, sit in the studio and just like vibe out to just like going for days, like going for days, like. It's some it's, that shit. That shit is rare. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I appreciate rare. that. I, I think it was probably like the sounds that I used too, because like I said, I, my I grew up with my dad. My dad played the saxophone, and he always had records playing. Um, so a lot of that, a lot of the music at that time was like real instrument heavy, and it always told a told a story. Mm-hmm. So like I wanted to convey that same thing in, in my music. Yeah, I'm trying to think like because. One thing that like fascinates me about you is like I've 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 been around you and seen you like evolve too. <laughs> so it's like I I I've seen you transition from like I remember when this wasn't nothing like this wasn't here none of this was here yeah. and then the whole front room damn near transformed too and then I saw you increase your presence on uh, like social media and stuff. I remember you couldn't stand that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I hate the I hate being in front of the camera. I hate like taking pictures. The whole I just want to work. I just want to get work done and I mean and, and have my account look right. Like I can care less about the celebrity of the industry. Yeah, I but, don't care about the light show. Yeah, That's like, what I, I call it. Yeah, I, I don't really care about that. But <clears throat> with today's market you got to be you got to have some type of a presence so i at least have an instagram and a twitter i don't really post a lot on twitter you might hear me say something uh every once in a while on twitter but um with the instagram like i try to pr- I, I try to put enough like i'm not on there all day but like i try to put like at least one or two posts out there other day plus it helps to when i by me having a studio there's always artists coming through here I could promote their stuff on my page. You mm-hmm. know what I mean, so even if I'm not posting something to me, I post their stuff on there. So it's, I mean, it's an extra avenue for them to. Yeah. You know what I mean, somebody that might not be following them, but following me, they can see their stuff. Oh, yeah. What 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 kind of like, or who who instilled that in you? Like the like, I don't want to necessarily be in it. Like, cause I I, I was kind of like. I don't say I was raised like that, but like I came up with, on that initiative. Like I don't want to be in front of the camera. I just want to put the work in, and like get it done like where, where you say you kind of got that from uh from two people for one for my dad and the other part of it like the older dudes on the street the niggas that would always be at the the corner hustling or whatever you could never take a picture of them because they didn't want to be in front of the camera but those is also the same dudes that was like all right i see you do or you do music or you do i think at that time i was playing ball so i was real heavy in playing ball you can't be out here in the corner. Go play ball. Go get the work, and just so stay focused on whatever your, whatever your goal is. So not necessarily the, I don't want to have my picture taken because I'm selling drugs. Part of it, but just focus on getting the work done. Mm-hmm. So I, I think a combination of those two things is just I just always wanted to focus on work. I wasn't really too big. Plus I don't like going to clubs and parties and stuff. That's just a personal thing to me. Mm-hmm. So. There's no uh, there's yeah, no other place for me to yeah, be. That's like yeah. really that got cameras and all that stuff popping. Like I'm just always in the studio working. How long do you say you had the studio for? Uh, I've had the studio for about ten years. Um, I say the studio really's been like real public and known, and I've been advertising a lot more the last five to four years. Mm. So, so, like, what are some of your favorite 
maybe tracks or projects that you like put together in here? Like, you, I know you do a lot of like working mm -hmm. with artists. Y'all just do like a project, like a Harry Fraud type of thing. What are some of your favorite projects you put together in the studio? Uh, this year, just period. Just period. Just period. Um, I worked on the Northern Lights project with Mike Prince this year. Mm -hmm. That was a completely different sound that I've ever done. That was the one that Oh, work. Yeah. Um, I I love uh mixing that project. Oh, and yeah. Working on that project. Um. Alex and Nani projects is always a, a a pleasure and dope experience. Um, yeah, I like the latest joint. I heard that one. The Man of Metal. Mm -hmm. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, mm, you throw one more in there. One more. Yeah. Top three. <sighs> Over ten years. I have to dig for this one. Um. I'll say the gospel project that I'm coming that I got coming up with T Rock this year. I'll keep it in recent projects. I've never done a gospel project. He released and, it. He, he he finally gonna release some music. Uh, yeah. yeah. We, <laughs> we, we 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 recorded twenty songs. We're gonna narrow it down to the final eight next week, and it's gonna put it up. That's how. When I was when I was working here, T Rock used to come in here. He had a, maybe a folder like a hundred songs. And I'm like, yo, these is hard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yo, like, we gonna release? Oh nah, man, I ain't released nothing. <laughs> I'm like, get the, like, stop playing, like, <laughs> stop playing, cause he he's he from he's from Buffalo, right? Yeah. And he's he was uh signed a bad boy or something. He was like that. signed a bad boy and Jive Records. Yeah, it was like you would never know. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting, I'm in the studio, and I'm like, I'm like, bro, you gotta drop, mm -hmm. you gotta drop some of this heat. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear that. Oh. He, he he did an EP. I want to say two years ago. He okay. put out like five or six joints. Yeah. But I this is look. like the official. And what's that called? The EP. Uh, the it's Lays and I know it's Lays and Rock. Um, that just got beats on there. I didn't uh, engineer that one. Um, and they keep taking it down and putting it back up. I don't know what's that about. <laughs> 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 I guess something expires and then they got to put it back up or whatever. But I, it it was laysandrock.com. So that that should be the link, but I know mm. you can get it on SoundCloud. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find it. Yeah, but I'm gonna tune in. Hell yeah! Like I'm, I, when I first when I first started, I I would have never known that. I'd have never known that, and it's just like it's so much talent in the city, and it's just like I feel like we never had a platform to like or like a spotlight on us long enough for it to like people to really see it, and I feel like we're finally getting that, getting that. Uh, that attention that we deserve, and we've been deserving. What right. what Westside Gun is doing is bringing definitely bringing a lot of attention here, and we had somebody else too that was doing like a conference, like vibrations events or something. Oh like that. yeah, uh, DC. DC. Okay. DC, yeah. yeah so that that was dope. He brought some people here. I think, mm -hmm. is, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Ao and Keys met there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he he got. I think that's how Keys. Did they met there? Well, I'm not sure. Oh. I I know Keys is a dope producer that's from yeah. here, and he's with Ao. But I remember. The very first event, Ao came here and was like one of the judges or like on the mm -hmm. panel or something. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember. I was, I went to the first couple, couple of them joints. Yeah, and I'm not sure why they like why they stopped or whatever, but I I do remember like that. That's a name that definitely stuck out. Yeah, they they still. I want to say he still got things in the work because I know he's uh he got like a label now. He's managing artists, sign artists. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, he's still uh, directing and all that. Yeah, shout out, shout out to DZ. He do videos or something? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. them joints be oh. dope. He did a, uh, he did a couple. I think he did uh, a joint with West and them. He did one with them. He did a joint with Carrie Hilson. Yeah, okay, he did, so uh, she was featured on the track. I think an A Boogie joint too. Yeah, I'm trying to. He did do one recently with Griselda, mm. or one of the. I don't know if exactly like Westside, but one of the members. I can't yeah. remember what okay. video it is. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know he did videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he been there. But I mean, mean, what he's been doing was was definitely dope. He's bringing attention here too. No, nah, that's facts. That's facts. Yeah. And it's the fact that they really like rep Buffalo too. That's the thing. Because there's been some people from Buffalo who've made it, but they didn't really like put yeah, on yeah, and yeah. stamp it like the way they do. They like repping Buffalo to the core. So it make you proud yeah. of being from the city and seeing people that come from where you come from make it. Right. So Buffalo I had that extra. Kids everywhere. That's a fact. 
That's a fact. Oh, and I forgot to mention uh, Son of Son on the Sunday, Son of the uh, Son of Tony project too. Son of Tony. Look at them joints, man. Let's see. Uh, wh- wh- what do you think is one of the things that helped you adjust to the like, to things like the digital age? Cause like I've like you, you said like you 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 gonna stick with what you do until like last minute and you feel like you gotta adjust. What, what's one of those things that help you keep keep you fret like keep you moving? Keep me update up to date. Yeah. Um. My kids, cause they gotta deal with technology, so I I think I get so, somewhat of an education from them, um, not and not wanting to be relevant or, yeah, not wanting to be not relevant. Mm. I mean, so I I run in the studio. I gotta listen to music that I wouldn't normally listen to. You know what I mean, cause I need to learn how to mix certain things, or I need to know how certain things need to sound. Yeah. Um. Always being just uh hungry for just for more knowledge, you know what I mean? It's like it's like working on the job and you gotta keep getting pressure training and stuff like that. You know what I mean? I'm always with that. I might not necessarily read the book, mm-hmm. but now I mean I'll watch a YouTube video or summary or um I catch an audio book or something on like new mixing trips or whatever or new programs and stuff like that. Right. Yeah man, because that's 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 a big thing, especially these days with everything changing so quick. Like, cause it's 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 hard to keep up with. It's, it's really hard to keep up with, and I'm I'm trying to think of like so many. Shit, you be keeping me up to date on shit. You older than me, <laughs> <laughs> bro. I, I be trying, cause like, I it's it's it still I still now I still be getting like overwhelmed, and I'm just like even with this crypto shit, like I don't I'm not the biggest like fan of it, but I feel like I know yeah, this you see is where gonna, it's going. Though, yeah, so you're like, have to this learn is going to be relevant. Point. So like I have to do this like. Now, well, some of it got to be a circle too, though, because like, I mean, like, how you just put me on to the like, I've heard of the NFT, but nobody ever like broke it down. How you just broke it down? So, I mean, now it's, it seems like something that I'll be interested in. I mean, I might like set up, take a an hour or two or whatever to sit down and read about it. Um, but getting information from other people that's just around you too, because I mean, you can't always be. I mean, you can't do everything yourself. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you need people around you that that give you certain things. Yeah, that's a fact. That's that's when I noticed I started like growing more, like and being able to like when we started linking up and just like people around me was like started working together. Mm-hmm. It, it, people people will, will really miss out. <laughs> like you'll really miss out, like not collaborating and shit. Cause it's like you may be able to do a little bit of everything, but it's like when okay, you could specialize in this. I specialize in this. Like I don't know, and we all work together. Yeah. That's when that's when you really start like taking off. Like that's when shit started working for me. What's the saying? If you want to go fast, do it by yourself. If you want to go far, you gotta yeah. have a team. Do it together. Yep. Yeah, that's a fact. <clears throat> it's a super fact. That's a super fact. So I want to backtrack a little. Well, not a little bit. Whatever. You said <laughs> <laughs> you said you said that you was big in the hooping too. Like in high school, growing up. So I, I didn't think I was gonna go to the NBA, but I was good for where I was at. Mm-hmm. Like I you didn't, had, you didn't like, like aspirations to go to college or nothing in hoop. That only because I wanted to help my mom. Like, I wanted to go play at uh, Michigan State because that's where mm-hmm. my mom's from. But, like, my freshman year, I played ball um, at, like, a community college and I got hurt. So, like, that was it. That was done. Were you having trouble, like, balancing the beat making and music while you were hooping, too? Like, figuring which one you really wanted to do? No. Nah, I, I don't. was the music off. For, for one, I don't sleep. So, like, basketball during the day, at night when I can't sleep, make beats all night, mm-hmm. get up, repeat. You know what I mean? So, like, Plus, I was running cross country. We was talking about that earlier. So, like, my my motor was was crazy um, when I was younger. But I basketball, it was it was it was something to do. Mm-hmm. I definitely didn't think I was going to the NBA. College was like all right. College, cause my parents made me go to college, so mm-hmm. it was just like all right, I might go play ball while I'm here too. Plus, that's where all the girls hung out at the gym. Right. Um, but music was always like a was something that I really wanted to take serious. Like, I dropped everything for music. So if basketball got in the way, I probably would have stopped. Yeah, that's real. Because I remember I, I, I remember I made the choice. I had to make the choice between basketball practice at 7 a.m. or a band. Mm-hmm. So I was like, fuck band. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck band. Girls well, I mean, I, I kind of had to be realistic around that age, too, because I also had my son around that age. Mm-hmm. 
So I was trying to get bread. I wasn't making bread playing ball unless yeah, I was playing in a street game yeah, or something. Yeah, you gain more responsibility, so. Yes, but I could. Nah, I know I could go sell the beat for a couple hundred dollars and be all right. Mm. That's a, how old were you when you had your first when you had your first kid? Nineteen. Mm. Yeah, because I we you know when we, when we talk to artists, we talk about like, like how like uh, what is like fatherhood or adulthood? It's like kind of like did that. Affect shape their music but mm-hmm. it's like you you was really getting into you've been taking it serious since young so it really did did it change like did well it, it kind of speaks for itself for real for real like maybe did it increase your work ethic or give you that extra book boost or it's like i gotta make it doing this music shit or whatever yeah I, I really had to figure it out especially if i wanted to see like a way to make money doing it like i had to take the business out of it uh more serious like I couldn't just be placing beats or giving away a bunch of free shit. I mean, I know you gotta give away some free mm-hmm. shit to get your name out there, but like so I make was a living too. Yeah, but I was on the like, nah, you gotta pay me for my shit like early. Right. Was it a was it a learning curve like the learning the business side of it versus just like enjoying making beats? Mm, no. Right. Because I, I noticed with a lot of artists, because like they'll have so much fun. Taking the pictures, taking taking the camera, doing all the artisty shit, yeah. and they don't take that time to learn the business. But see, side. I never cared about that though, so I yeah. came in with the intention of making money. Plus, my dad runs his own business too, so I already kind of had a business sense about me That's since right. I was uh, since I was young. Yeah, yeah, because I'm I'm seeing now, like I look at like I'm reviewing contracts or something like that. I see the splits that producers get, and they be trying to short boys like trash. Definitely trash. My yeah, bad, my that, stomach over that shit is crazy. And it's just like, I feel like as a producer, like you're a beat maker, you have to learn know the what the business because they'll try to well, pull the rug. I, <laughs> under I, your I think feet. in today's world, because everything is so put in your face now, everything is so public. When people are complaining about the contract that they signed, like I think Hit Boy had an issue the, earlier this year, whatever mm-hmm. that became public. I think when, when Hit, Hit Boy got signed, he was like 18, 19. Yeah. And I think Polo signed him, or I think Polo was like involved in that. When you that age and somebody offer you a chunk of change, you just see that chunk of change. You don't see all the fine print and all that other stuff yeah. underneath that. And even in today's, that's still some situations. Like, yeah, I'm about to take this trash contract, but. I don't got nothing right now, and I know this little fifty thousand is gonna help my mom right now. Mm. So you willing to deal with some bullshit to not I mean get out of a certain situation? No, yeah, that's facts. What do they What do they say? Never, uh, never. What they, never sign a deal when you when you hungry or something like that. Or it's like when you need money, you shouldn't you shouldn't be trying to desperate to make deals or some shit like something like right. that. But yeah, nah, yeah, I, I, I know what you, I heard the saying. Yeah, that's definitely key. Who I think I was watching a docu. Uh, it might have been an interview with uh, it was like Alchemist and Just Blaze. They were chopping it up, and he said Just Blaze said something interesting. He was like, "What he used to do to to collect more royalties is like he would take a beat, publish it as his song, mm-hmm. and then when he would like lease it to somebody else or tell somebody, he would, yeah, he would sample, sample it so he collect yeah. double royalties." Mm. I ain't never yo, heard that. I was like, yo, I was like, yo, that's genius. <laughs> but I'm just like, but well, a lot of that too is with that with him by him doing that, he played a lot of samples over, so that also gave him a bigger chunk of the pie too, because you didn't have to pay out certain money with sampling. Mm. So like when he would sample his, it, you wouldn't have to pay that portion. Cut. No, so like, so say I got like a a Barry White record or whatever, and I want that orchestra. Mm. What Just Blaze was doing was find another orchestra to play stuff that's similar to that or replay that. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. it becomes a new composition. So he can then register that and then sample that. And that's mm-hmm. how he get his double. Oh, that's how, yeah. That's smart. That's definitely how. It... Or some people just replay it and then just, you know what I mean, sample it that way. They that, mm-hmm. they might not register it and get double, but mm-hmm. they don't got to pay out that extra money for, for getting a sample clip. It's kind of mm-hmm. like when people upload stuff on YouTube, they'll like change the pitch of a song. Oh yeah, the tempo. So that it doesn't get taken down or copyrighted. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I seen something like that with Taylor Swift. Like she was gonna re-record all of her albums or something like that because like she didn't own her ma- her masters. She doesn't. They keep getting resold. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> it's some dude, it's crazy. Dude, Scooter Braun. I think he got it now. Yeah. 
That's I, I think that's think his so. name. Yeah, Scooter. Somebody just signed it to manage uh, under him too. I'm trying to think. It was a big artist, and I'm like, why would you do that? I keep hearing he, people talk about Scooter Braun. I don't know if he even know who he is. I didn't know he was until Bra- Drake said him in the one song. What? I, I, I heard, I heard Joe Button talking shit about him. Was Scooter Braun. I heard of him with uh, when he was with Bieber. When he was with Bieber. And it was just like, these people be <laughs> making bread off these dudes. Like, I thought Usher had Bieber first. I don't know. I did, I, I he he worked with him. I know Scooter Brown work, is working with him now. I just know. I remember. I heard. That's when I first heard the name when he got attached to Biebs. But yeah, man. This. What What would you say was like? Did you ever have like a manager, or like artist under you? Artists under me? No. I've, people ask me all the time, and I always refuse. Um, only because I have a lot going on. And I know what it takes to manage an artist. For one, it takes a big chance because at the drop of a dime, my artist be like, "All right, no, I'm not doing music no more." Which I've already, I went through that too. My uh, my cousin was about to get signed, um, and I swear this guy was like the second coming to Biggie. We had two projects done, everything was ready to shop, and he was like, "No, nah, I'm not doing music no more." And I was like, "Like, I was like, what the fuck? Like, I was ready to fist fight him, and everything, like my blood cousin." So, uh, that was my one bad experience. Um, and the reason why I say I would never manage an artist, um, the other side of it is too, I've been signed twice, mm-hmm. and both of those experiences were just bad. It was pretty much like slave labor, Jeez. slave labor for beats, and I was just like, I'm, I'm not doing it. Luckily, I was smart enough to, I did sign, but I was smart enough to change the term of my, my agreement, and I, uh, I crossed off the power of attorney line. So they didn't have my power of attorney, and I, I always limit every contract to six Six months to a year. So if I, if I do get in a bad situation, I'm like, all right, I only got to stick it up for, like, that, that time. Word. That's definitely, that's definitely key. That's the key. Yeah. <laughs> Power of attorney. <laughs> Make sure you keep that joint because they'll definitely give you a public defendant or somebody <laughs> or their same lawyer. <laughs> yeah, they know all their own loopholes. That's definitely key. Oh, man. What's – uh, who are some, like – I know you got your core is like older, like I don't say older hip hop, but like that 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 era, like Jay Z era type mm-hmm. shit. Who who are some artists now that you that you hear or producers that you hear now and you're like I really like what they're doing. Um, I could probably name the actual songs or artists better than I can name the producers because a lot of producers, there's so many producers out there now. It's hard to keep up. Especially without having the credits and like being able to look at the joint. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of producers, they don't have producer tags too. So if you don't <laughs> yeah, have the credits and they have a producer tag, you don't know who made it. Yeah. Right. Um, I know Othello was dope. Um, I like Murder Beats. Um, Buddha and Grants. Um, I actually use uh, Grand's room when I'm in New York City. So shout out to Buddha and Grand. <laughs> shout out to them. They actually big mentors of mine too. Um, I like Metro now. I didn't like him before, but that's because I was fighting the whole trap wave, whatever. <laughs> I had to get. So over what was it. the moment when you started liking them? Though, maybe the song or the project or like time um, period, year. He did a joint for Ross. He did some joints for Meek Mill. I'm a big Meek Mill fan. Um, did he do Mask Off? The mm-hmm. Future? Yeah. With the flutes. So I, I, like, I fuck with that. Future got a joint called F&N. It's a switch. F&N. It's a switch yeah, it's up song, in that song. Yeah, that's my that's shit, right. yeah. I had that shit on repeat. I don't know. I, did Metro do that? I don't know. Well, I don't who, know, but what, it's, it's on the Wizard who, album. Who, who, I know that. Whoever the fuck made that beat, you know what <laughs> I mean? I, I'm a fan for life. That, yeah, that when that shit tired. switch... <laughs> like, I, I want to fast forward it just to the switch and just listen to that part. Right. Um, I I kind of I kind of listen to everything now just because I have to. Mm. Um, I like Apollo Brown. Right. Um, I actually just bought his drum kit. Um, V Don, I think his name is. Yeah, V. You heard his project with Shay Noir. Shay Noir. Oh, Apollo. Yeah. I didn't hear it yet. Is it out? <laughs> I know they was doing it. Yeah, it's, it's out. Okay. We just did an interview with Shay Noir too. 
Okay. Yeah, Shay, Shay's cool. She had a uh, she did something else here like a couple years ago when I got to meet her. Yeah, yeah, Shay was cool. Yeah, Shay was dope. Let me think. Uh, Since we on the topic, your favorite? Um, could you say Heat Makers, Kanye, and Just Blaze was your three ones that influenced you? What are you like? A couple of your favorite beats from them. Uh, like the song. Heat Makers. Because that dips that era with Heat Makers. Yeah, crazy. it was crazy. Um, I say Projects. So, Joel Santana's From Me To You, which I believe is mm-hmm, in yep. I said when I came out, I was <laughs> to that last week. <laughs> um, That's probably my favorite. Um, That and the Dips at Immunity one. Diplomatic community. Yeah. 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 Um that's probably my favorite from Heat Makers. Um Just Blaze, my favorite joint from him is either between Breathe with Fab and what's the orchestra joint he did for Drake? Mm. I can't think of your name, but he did a, or- a crazy orchestra beat for uh for Drake. Kanye, I'm just a Kanye fan. No matter what crazy mm. shit he do, I'm <laughs> just a fan. Yeah, I, I, thought, I thought you was going to say... Uh, I grew up on, yeah. For Just Blaze, I thought you were going to say Exhibit C. Or something nah, like that. That, that was mad simple for him. That's for him. Uh, yeah, I, I, Just Blaze, like, he, he has the, like, iconic joints for me. Like, I think of, I think of him. I think of, I think of Swiss Beats. Swiss Beats more making my anthems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Some joints, yeah. Some crazy joints like that. I still listen to their Versus playlist on Tidal. Oh. Just Blaze versus uh, Switch. That's classic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, me and my wife was driving to, uh, they dropped my car off at the dealership, like out there in Guestville. And she was in front of me, and she ended up calling me because I listened to that playlist, but I was bugging in the car. My head was bobbing. I was doing dances, all types <laughs> of shit. And she was like, yo, what are you doing in the in the truck? Because all she saw was me moving. Like, people are looking at you or whatever. It's this playlist. I don't give a fuck. Like, this shit is rocking. I don't care. Right. It's feeling that shit. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I know you, you spoke on, uh, who else were some of your mentors? You spoke on, uh, you said drumming, drumming Gets. Buddha and Grand. Buddha, Buddha and Grand. Yeah, Buddha they're Grand. producers in New York City. Yeah. Uh, they work out at Engine Room. Yeah. Did you have any other mentors in the industry? No. Um, B- Buddha and Grands, they kind of have the mentality that I have. They're willing to like share knowledge, willing to take people under their wing and offer certain things. Actually, no, I'll take that back. Uh, this guy named Ariel. Ariel, we call him A, but his name is Ariel. He's a uh, he's an engineer. He mixed T.I.'s King album. And a bunch of other stuff that you hear on the radio today. Um, he was my first engineer mixed mentor, but just just them two. I, like I had a lot of part of the reason why this is all in existence is because I couldn't get nobody to help me, so I had to figure it out myself. Like I applied to get internships at every major studio in this area, when nobody called me back. Um, I tried to. I went to school for a little bit for music business. I mean, not music business, music engineering. Ended up having to leave because I was working on some other stuff or whatever. So I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to learn it. Get it on my own, got the building, converted it, and just got to work. What, what would be some advice you give to a, a producer right now who's like, maybe just only like, they first step, they probably like just making beats in their room well, and they want to get it out to artists and stuff like that. What, what would be a... What would be your advice to them? Um, I would say find an artist that likes your sound and just build with them. Um, you can shop beats to a bunch of different artists, chase people, chase artists around. I mean, that's the route you want to go with. Uh, I think it's wasted time. I mean, you can't go to the, like the big major. When it comes to make, getting major placements, you kind of got to be, like, in the way today's structure is set up, you got to be in the room, yeah. is what, what I call it. Um, if you're not in the room, you kind of got to build your own room, which is, like what I, like I said, what I did here. Um, so you got to go, you got to kind of float between all those major studios where all those recording artists are. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I mean, when it's your chance, like, don't fuck it up. Like, if you do get in the room, like, you play some shit, 
Because once they kick you out, <laughs> not mm-hmm. me, damn near. I mean, you can probably get another chance like a year or two down the road when you develop your son or whatever. But in my experience, like I've saw people play beats in, in major studios or whatever for artists. And niggas really get like laughed out of the room and like should be bad. Yeah, that's rough. Like, not me, crush your spirit. Yeah, I mean, plus, ego. Plus, <laughs> yeah. yeah, plus niggas be like high and, and drunk, so like it don't oh, be yeah, no so filter. Yeah, so they really be like, yeah. yo, they be like, get this nigga the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, but I, I would say like starting out, like really. Plus, I mean, this is once once you find your own artists or find an artist that really fuck with you and fuck with your sound, like y'all can go far. Like, I mean, that's that's been the formula. Not recently, that but that's been the formula for years. Mm-hmm. Like, if you can find an artist and develop your sound with them, definitely do that. I mean, or if you're a personable person, you try to go the room hopping route or whatever. I mean, that works for people too. Um, there's no like right or wrong thing. Like, music business is the one of the one of the industries where you can pretty much like there's no set formula. Like, whatever works for you, like that's what works for you. Thing? Nah, I'm good. Yeah, it's yeah. It's been fun. It's been weird, like, cause he, like when I met him, he's like he was man a few words, mm-hmm. yeah, and it was just like now it's like we I sitting had, there. I, <laughs> I had to get out my show, man. man. Word. man. That, that was part of my adjustment period. I, I had to get out my show a little bit. Word. Yeah, we appreciate you pulling up though, sharing all this info with us for sure. Well, yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, man. Come, man, book your sessions, man. <laughs> where, where can everybody find you? What website? Castlebeats.net, C-A-S-S-O beats.net, and literally everything is on there. My phone number, my email, uh, you can book a session right from the website or you can hit me directly. Um, Links to other music that I've done, news, uh, links to people I affiliate with are on there. Like I said, I'm just trying to be a bridge for everything and everybody around me. Word, word. We, we definitely appreciate you. For sure. Shit, appreciate you pulling up, bro. You can get us on, you say everybody can get you, castlebeats.com, streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Fuss, YouTube, all that. Yes, sir. No label to pop. We out. Peace. She watching me like a nigga.